you kind of have a choice of we're going to ostracize and, and exclude and uh, eliminate this, this part of our family, or are we going to pull together as a family and try and understand and learn and support? And our families definitely did that. My family, I don't think, has ever reconciled it. My father just died last month, and I, the, I don't think he was ever at peace with it. I'd even asked my mother about it when I was high school, in high school and said that, how come I, my, I would much rather be with my friend Pam than any of these boys? And she said that, uh, that it would change for me someday. It's definitely worth coming out. Some people hesitate on it, you know, because they don't want to be an outcast or um, not accepted. But in the long run, it is much better because it's a huge burden lifted off your shoulders. I find that giving some reading material is a real good first step because someone can pick it up and put it back down. You can't always take in a whole lot the first few times you're searching for some answers. People think that northern Minnesota is uh, kind of backwards and truthfully I, I think we're uh, a lot more progressive than people think. Coming Out Proud is made possible through funding from Iron Zeal Films. The biggest thing that's changed over the number of years that I've been out is that more people are out in support of GLBT equality. And some of those people are gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender, and some aren't. Well, I'm not gay, and I don't have kids who are gay or close family members who are gay, but I work for equality for all people because it's the right thing to do. When I first came out, there were a lot of things that are different than now. No states, no states had human rights protection based on sexual orientation or gender identity. That didn't happen until 1982 when Wisconsin passed the first statewide uh, statute protecting people. There weren't hate crimes laws, period, when I came out. In many cities, Minneapolis included, men were still being arrested in bars for dancing with men. I live in a very small town. There's, it's a town of 600 people. I, for the last 24 years, have owned and operated a storefront pizza shop, single owner, operator, and uh, that's been more of a challenge than dealing with the family, I guess. You know, that uh, from periods when I first opened of having death threats, you know, kids going by in their cars and screaming. And I always like to think about it, though, that if that's our measure of manhood in this culture, then I'm glad I'm queer. The traditions of Native culture are way more accepting of alternative genders that my culture, which is Dakota, have words identifying alternative genders. So that would mean that there was a level of acceptance that really isn't here now. And the teachings are one of acceptance and honor and being that part of the circle, which is what the culture is all about. I'm not so sure that the politics of Native America have caught up to the traditions. When, when I first started working at Outfront Minnesota, there were many days when legislators would say to me, I don't have any in my district. I kind of am with you, but I don't have any, any of you people, so I don't really have a community for it. So I decided right then and there that I wasn't going to hear that. We were going to make sure they knew they had some, because everybody does. And so these people now go visit their legislators and in big numbers, and it helps the legislators, even if they vote against gay rights, they still have in their head that person who came to Lobby Day and they had to talk to, and they're going to have to talk to next year. Yeah, I just found out that there are people here meeting with 61 of 67 Senate districts. Uh, my wife and I, Sandy and I, have uh, two children, and our son, uh, when he was in ninth or tenth grade, I think ninth grade, um, he and I would often go on walks, and on one of those walks, on a cold January night, um, he asked if we could uh, just sit down at, in a, on a park bench. He said, Dad, I'm scared. 
I think I might be gay. And I've always remembered the, the scared word, you know, that that was his reaction. Uh, I was a teacher in our school district, as is my wife is an educator. I, I knew that there were gay kids in school. I thought we were probably one of the few families that had a gay son. I knew it was difficult for kids who were perceived or might be gay. But I didn't really want to accept that he was gay. You know, it was like, well, it's just a stage. And I talked to him about it. And I said, no, you know, don't jump to any conclusions. It's just, you know, you're just young. You're just uh, uh, going through this phase of your life. And, and you need to let yourself experience life a little bit before you make that call. During that two years of me not being aware of it was a very difficult two years just because Dan and our son w were holding secrets and holding secrets is awfully tough on a body and soul. It wasn't healthy. We didn't talk about it with our daughter. Uh, my wife and I didn't really talk about it. It just was sort of there. But through some of this time of our son wondering about if he was gay or not, what I saw and what I think we both saw was our son pulling back from his many activities, pulling back from the sports he was involved in. You could really see that he was struggling a lot. He was afraid his friends might not want to be a friend anymore if he might be a gay man. Went away to college, went to Carleton College and um, dated. Brought home a beautiful girl to homecoming. She was studying to be a doctor, wonderful girl. We thought, oh, this is the right girl. Fortunately, she was from San Francisco. She seemed to know a gay man when she saw one and, uh, and really helped him out a great deal. And by his sophomore year, he came out. It was after that that he really started living again. And we went in the closet. Then we had the secret and from our friends and from our family and from our church, that's where PFLAG came in. PFLAG promotes the health and well-being of gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgendered persons, their families and friends. Through we went to a PFLAG meeting in the Twin Cities a few times, but they told us about a PFLAG chapter that was meeting in Northfield. So we went to Northfield, uh, and lo and behold, we met three, four other families from Red Wing we all went to Northfield for, I don't know, three or four meetings and decided we should have our own chapter here. And that was 13 years ago. I was raising three sons and a daughter, and my gay son was a, a mystery to me, um, full of potential and, and gifts, but um, there was still that missing piece. And so when he did come out to me as a gay man, it was actually a huge relief. I think knowledge is a wonderful thing and that's a starting point to acceptance. My husband and I have two sons. Our youngest son is gay and the most important thing to us is equality. That they each be treated equally and that they both be responsible adults. For the first time in those years that had passed, by that time maybe five years, we could say out loud that we had a gay son and other people understood and understood why it was hard to say that even. Once our three families came out to the community publicly, quite publicly on the front page of a newspaper titled Parents of Gays Stepping Out. By being out, just like a gay person being out, then you can begin a much better quality of life. You can let other, you can be there for other people that if they have questions, you can be there to support each other. I'm most proud of the times that we go to the high school and talk to the students because from our daughter's perspective, I think if she could have at least had some of that knowledge, she wouldn't have been um, so um, hurt all the time, I think. Um, it w I think she would have just been much more comfortable realizing some of the other students had actually heard the words homosexual, homosexual and, and so when we go and the students ask us questions, I just feel like, like that's just so important to support these kids and give them a little bit of knowledge while they're still in um, high school. 
our purpose was to help people learn and not be afraid and to help there be information out there or support people out there they knew that they could talk with. What's the hardest thing that other people don't understand that we know when we sit around and talk to each other? They don't always understand that our kids are just like anybody else. You know, we're all absolutely the same. There's nothing different just because we're gay or heter heterosexual, so. Uh, it's in the genes. It's, it's not a choice. You don't sit down and say, oh, I'm going to like boys or I'm going to like girls. The way I see it, I think homosexuality is fundamentally a question of biology, not morality. We love this community. We love the people. We want to help it not have to go through what we did of not knowing things and having such a, a difficult time, only difficult because we didn't understand it all. I think having a, a gay child was probably one of the best things that ever happened to our family. From the standpoint of, uh, I think it helped us understand what's important in life. And I sometimes shudder at the thought of where I'd be right now on this issue. Um, if I didn't have a gay child. I, I think it's great that my sisters are supporting me because there are other, a whole bunch of other people out there that don't have the support that I have. I go to a women's college and every day you hear people come up to you and say, you know, I hear that you have a gay sibling. What is that like? Um, my sister or brother just came out also. And it's so simple. The simple answer is don't treat them any differently. Um, you're still going to love them unconditionally. After about 30 or 40 minute conversation, people come around and they're like, you know, you're right. I never really thought about it in that perspective. We go to a theological school. Most people have Catholicism getting in the way of their views. So it's hard to put your personal prejudices and everything particularly that the church has taught us aside for a few minutes and then make it a lifetime putting aside those prejudices. I tried to date um, some girls, and then I just realized that I'm just a better friend with girls and that I can relate to them more. And then when I started noticing that I was more into guys, um, about ninth grade, some of my friends kind of came up to me and they, like, they asked me about it. And I said, yeah, I guess I am. So, and then they, they didn't really care as much. They just wanted to know it was my, like closure for both of us. It is not only a great state in general, but GLBT people out there in Minnesota are amazing. They're just amazing. People have lived in environments that are hostile. They've made change in places where you could not believe they could. It's, it's astounding. It's very, very hopeful to go and look at the state and what people do. I'm from Virginia, Minnesota on the Iron Range. I didn't know there were gay people or GLBT people when I was young and in high school. And uh, I uh, thought even once I got into college that there were only gay people in big cities. So um, I tried to fit in. I tried to uh, lead sort of a heterosexual lifestyle, but I realized that it just it wasn't, wasn't who I was. And I didn't, I met my partner when I was 32 years old. My mother liked my partner, Angelique, and thought it was nice that I had a nice friend. And I, uh, I told them on Thanksgiving, <laughs> and the, uh, it was probably the best choice of times. But uh, they were, I think they were so shocked that in the beginning they didn't know what to say because it was late in the evening and then they slept on it. And then in the morning, my mother had all these questions like, was this uh, Angel's idea? You know, you, th this really isn't you, you aren't, you aren't like this. And, you know, have you thought about this? You could lose your job. Uh, how are you gonna make your way in the world? Uh, we're never gonna have any grandchildren. It was uh, all of those things. Started out difficult and, and now we're, we're doing pretty well. I was about 16 years old, I started to realize that I was gay, but my family is, I was brought up in a very fundamentalist church, and so I was really scared to. I mean, like, I even had, like, bad dreams about it and stuff, and um, 
So I, I figured I was going to wait until I was about 18 in that way because I'd heard my family of talking about, you know, sending people off to camps, you know, to get fixed and stuff. And so I was scared. I didn't want to do that. And so I, I knew I'd wait till I was 18. And it was about a week after I turned 18 when I told my dad and my stepmom, who I was living with at the time, and it was about a, they didn't talk to me for about a week. They didn't say anything. And then one night, uh, my dad came down to my room and kind of had his Bible with him, you know, and a big long list of stuff he had to talk with me about. And it wasn't a really good conversation. He basically gave me 24 hours to get out of his house or check into a place down in St. Louis. And so I said, I'm not going down there. So I left. My mom didn't find out till about four months later. I figured I'd wait because of what happened. I didn't want to, you know, have all my family disliking me at the same time. So it was a burden at first, but I go to college and I have really great friends and a support group I can talk to all the time. And I mean, it'd be nice to have family too, but I can't change them, so. Came out actually in 1969, a few years ago in Marshall, Minnesota. Actually met a young woman that I worked with and realized that I was attracted to her. And quite frankly, it scared the living daylights out of me. I turned to drinking and I became very promiscuous sexually, uh, primarily with men, but some with women as well. And I was determined to you know, prove that I could have a fulfilling sexual experience with men as well as women. And what I found out is not about the sexual experience. You know, for me, it's about the emotional attachment to people, though men I find to be great friends. I don't find the same intimacy with men as I do with women. But I really didn't start coming out to my family, to my friends, or anyone until I actually moved up into the cities where there was more supportive environment. In 2002, I moved back to Marshall, Minnesota and with my partner. Basically, we had this discussion, are we going to go back into the closet now that we're moving to a smaller town? And I said, I don't know how to do that anymore. You know, I've lived openly for so many years now, I don't know how to do things anything any differently. When I was in high school, which was the early 70s, you couldn't take a book out on homosexuality from the library. It was always homosexuality, unless you asked the librarian. So if you're a 16-year-old kid, like I was, trying to decide if I was a lesbian or not, wanting information, I couldn't get it without going to the librarian. So that's not true now. Now you walk into most commercial bookstores and there's the gay and lesbian section, you know, and nobody's looking at you when you're there. You're just picking out books. Nobody's saying, look who's over there. I served in the military in the U.S. Army from 1990 to 1994. Uh, when I went in, I did not have any idea of my sexual orientation. Just kind of thought I was straight like everybody else that I knew. And uh, there came a time in 1990 three where I was really struggling with issues of knowledge of other people being gay who were in the military. Uh, a doctor, an army physician, referred me to an army psychologist who referred me to the public library uh, in Germany on base and he said, I think you should study the very thing that you're afraid of because I was pretty homophobic, uh, admittedly. And uh, I came upon a book um, by uh, Phyllis Lyons and Del Martin, and uh, turns out it's a classic. And I, I read stories about other women in the relationships, and I was like, oh my God, that's me. And that's how I figured it out. I wrote a letter, and then I photocopied it, and sent one to my mom and one to my dad, because they weren't together anymore. And I said to them, don't call me. I want you to think about it and write back. I just didn't want to talk about it to them. It was just dif really difficult. And my dad dishonored that, called me and said, I love you the way you are. You're my child. And you know, we both cried on the phone. My mom honored it, wrote back and said, uh, you know, I have different beliefs, but I think that you're going to have a harder life because of the way you are. She thought it was a phase. Um, but she said, you're the same child I gave birth to, and I love you anyway. So. That was great. Um, I have two brothers. One's really supportive and one I don't have a relationship with anymore. Well, I didn't come out until I was 40 years old. I was born and raised over in Austin, Minnesota and uh, 
growing up, the only things, I never knew the, the word for how I felt, but as I got older, I found out that the words were very negative and, and not pleasant words. Back in the, the, the 40s, the 50s, it was very difficult to come out. You had to be very careful who you talked to, and uh, you usually could end up getting battered and beaten around. In a smaller community, you feel like you're the only one. Matter of fact, you know you're the only one until you, you start coming out. And most of the time, you head for the, to the Twin Cities for any uh, entertainment. When I dealt with the issue, I, I was a manager of a firm. And one of my employees came up to me and said, uh, what's happened to you? And I said, well, what do you mean? And he says, well, you're happy and you're smiling all the time. So it, made a, it, it was a big relief. I knew early on that I liked my girlfriends better than my boyfriends. And uh, I didn't tell anybody. I tried to figure out who I was. I knew my brother liked girls and I liked girls. I didn't know if that meant I was a boy or, or what. I couldn't figure out who I was and I didn't have anybody to talk to. That's probably the most difficult thing is you see something different about yourself, but you can't tell anybody because you don't really know what it is and you don't know how they'll respond. I remember my sister lived in Washington and she met me at the airport with her husband. They took me to a Japanese dinner. I mentioned being part of this project that was going on in St. Paul. And I mentioned and used the word gay and lesbian several times. And uh, she didn't say anything. And I finally I said, I have used the word gay three times, I think it is. And um, you haven't said anything. She said, well, I don't think, I mean, I think we knew it. And I said, well, you might have known it, but I've never said it out loud. And I want to be recognized. <laughs> and she said, we recognize you. And then we all laughed. I think coming out is a delight. And I've had very positive experiences with it. now. I make an assumption that if I come out to people, they have to at least think about it a little bit. I had known since about the age of four that I felt like I should have been born female, but I couldn't, couldn't deal with it. Plus, I didn't have any role models. I didn't have any examples of transgender people that I felt I could relate to. And so I kept pushing it away, suppressing it, ignoring it, trying to pretend it didn't exist and it finally reached a point where I had to deal with it and I didn't want to admit it. In the first year I started therapy because as a transsexual you have to go through therapy in order to get letters for surgery and all of that stuff. That first year I was in therapy I couldn't even own the word transsexual. I couldn't even say it about myself. I could say it about other people but I could never say that that is indeed who I was as a person. And so it was very, very painful. I was suicidal that first year, and I just did not want to have to, to deal with it. Finally, I decided that was no way to live. It wasn't fun. I wasn't enjoying myself. I really didn't want to kill myself, but I just felt like I was stuck between a rock and a hard place. So I finally decided I had to start dealing with it, and it was about that time I could take ownership of that identity for myself. Some people, when they transition, will move away. And I felt I owed my friends and family the option to make up their own minds. My own family has been very, very supportive. My former wife's family has been very, very supportive. All my friends, uh, the people I deal with on a daily basis, have all been very, very supportive and very good. Uh, the University of Minnesota program in human sexuality is probably one of the best gender clinics in the world. And I feel so fortunate that I was born and raised here and lived here at the time of my transition because I found such tremendous community. I came out when I was uh, 31 years old. I am 30, going on 38 right now. And I uh, lived in Duluth. And um, I had a child who was four at the time. I, I have a young daughter. and. Um, I'd known for quite some time that I was a lesbian. I just wasn't sure about uh, coming out and was kind of debating a lot about whether or not I wanted to um, do that while I had a child because I was afraid for her. 
and what her life might be like. And then I just remember I had a moment where I was doing the dishes and I was looking out the window and I was thinking, you know, when she turns 18 and she goes out of the world as an adult, how am I going to tell her to be true to who she is and, and to be an independent thinker and to not be afraid of what she believes in if I, if I don't role model that for her right now? And it was the very next day that I kind of came out to everybody at work and my family and not only do we need to keep coming out, but our children need to keep coming out and our families need to keep coming out because they need to keep referring to us in one way or another. And so um, don't assume that everyone around you isn't gay or lesbian or bisexual or transgender or that they don't have a family member that is, that their parents aren't, that their children aren't because trying to keep an environment open for people to be able to talk about it. And for every family member that comes out and says, yes, this is my daughter and I'm proud of her, or, this is my son or, these are my moms and I don't care what you all say, um, that that makes a huge, huge difference um, in providing an environment that's safe for all of us to live in our communities. And so um, just remember that there's a lot of other people that are affected too. Coming Out Proud is made possible through funding from Iron Zeal Films.